a very fitting song. What? Very fitting. Hello, everyone. This session in... Say hi to Notch. Hi, Carl. Hello. Hi, Carl. hi, Jacob, in no order. Hi. We are going to talk about, well, the session's called How to Run Mojang. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are curious of how does Mojang run? How was it formed? And that's what we're going to talk about here. And then we'll take audience questions at the end. So I'd kind of like, well, we'll start with Marcus. And although we kind of went to the story of how Minecraft got started, that didn't have really anything to do with how this company got started and why. You want to run us through the beginning of that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, me and Jacob uh, had a game idea a couple of years ago, which is uh, what later on turned into Scrolls. And uh, when Minecraft started to take off, uh, we discussed uh, uh, him dropping to part-time and working like one or two days a week on Scrolls and me doing the same, kind of working on Minecraft three to four days a week and then working on Scrolls as well. Uh, but then later on we actually decided to just, uh, him quitting his day job totally and then we started a company and he could run Scrolls on his own and I focus on Minecraft. So that's kind of the initial seed of it. And then later on we realized we don't know how to run a company at all. Like you need an office and employees and there's some tax thing you have to pay or you go to jail. So we uh, talked to Carl and uh, got him on board. He was, the, he was my boss at the job I had before I kind of went full-time Minecraft. So that's how it started. So Carl, when Marcus approached you about this idea, like my understanding is that he originally approached you to, for your help in finding someone. Yeah, he, he sort of asked me if I knew anyone in my network that could sort of head up the business for Mojang, his, the, the company that they were starting, and uh, I sort of suggested myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good referral, yeah. very personal referral. So why, you know, I mean, you had worked with Marcus already. Like, why did you, like, what did you see in, in his idea and in his plan that made you leave your job that you were already doing to come and found this company, which is a risk? Well, we, we actually had tried to hire Marcus for over a year. Um, and, uh, we, you know, obviously he is a fantastic talent uh, and, and a great guy. Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, do go on. Oh, thank you. Uh, and um, so we, um, we actually had a, a, a problem, uh, a coding issue that we couldn't solve ourselves at the moment. And we asked Marcus and he, he said sort of like, we, I don't want to mess with invoices and stuff like that. So uh, I, I'll, I think I'll just pass. And then somehow we convinced him. And uh, I think it was on a Friday. He said, yeah, maybe. And then on the, on the Monday, he just delivered the code. and. Give me some money for it, and, and that was <laughs> was pretty much the first. Was that his invoice? Give yeah. me some money. Yeah, <laughs> I, I told you I didn't know how to do that. Yeah. So so, so he, uh, that's when we sort of really w uh, knew that we wanted to hire Marcus because he, you know, he was brilliant, and um, uh, we finally, uh, I, when he, he quit his job before that, we got uh, to working with him, and it only took like two months until. Um, his money from Minecraft uh, was more than your salary, or even less than that, I think. Um, so it was quite easy to see the potential in, in what, what, what he was doing. So it was sort of an easy decision for me to leave the, the company that, that I was running at the time. So it wasn't, at the, by the time you made the decision or even knew about it, it wasn't even quite the risk that it could have sounded like. It, there's a risk in anything, but uh, you know, there, at this time it was sort of stable. The curve was looking great. We uh, we didn't know it was becoming this kind of phenomenon that it is today, but uh, but it's uh, it it had had great potential and, and it, it's a fun project. So. so Jacob, like you've been there obviously from the start. That is the story. I I've only heard Marcus's perspective on it though. Like well, from your side, like when you and Marcus started talking about this. Like, what were you thinking? Like, what was your plan and involvement in, in wanting to start something that was more than just what you were already doing? Well, I think, like most people, uh, you know, watching uh, what happened with Minecraft and how Marcus did that, it's, it's very inspiring. I think there's a lot of people who, who thought about, you know, what it would like to, to be an indie developer and actually try to make games on your own. Uh, 
But you know, at the same time, when you have a job, you have a family to support, it is a big step uh, to, to actually go out there on your own. Um, but it's, it, when Mark is actually, when, when, he, when he asked me about this and we started you know, talking about it, it, it just made so much sense because it sounded like so much fun. And we had worked with each other for like four or five years previous to that. But in the last year when we started making Minecraft, we didn't have the same job. We worked at different places. And I think we just basically missed each other very much. And so, so we figured like to actually start a company together where we can spend a lot of time with each other and, and do some fun stuff. It just, that's, that's a chance I wouldn't pass it up for anything. And so we made it happen and it's, yeah, it's been su super fun. I mean, most companies as they start, you know, you start with a few people, they grow in two years. It's grown from, well, you guys weren't even the first employees because you all had to quit your jobs. You hired other people first to start, like the rapid, amazing growth. Like, uh, well, Marcus, first, like, what do you feel about the company? You know, we've talked a lot about the game, but you walk into the office every day, sometimes there's new faces there. Like, how do you think it's possible for us to move forward and still maintain the spirit of when it was just you three? I think. From the start, the most important aspect when we hire someone is how does this affect the group and how does it fit into the existing group and the kind of uh, feel we want in the company. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, not everyone is exactly the same, but I think to find a group that actually works well together and has uh, unique abilities is, is very important. So, uh, so all three of us are involved in every like hiring process to kind of try to gauge the personality for someone, which is really difficult to do in an interview. Uh, so um, I think that's been the key so far, and just keep trying to do that and just make sure uh, the atmosphere stays the same. And I think we should avoid growing too much. It's, we've been saying that for a long time. Originally, we were going to be eight people, and now we're, I don't know, five billion? I think it's 28. Five million people. Okay, five million. Um, yeah. Well, so what, what would you describe as the spirit of Mojang? Because we talk a lot about maintaining that spirit, but what is that spirit? What, what do you think sets Mojang apart from not necessarily every other company, but why is it special to you and what are you trying to maintain? Well, to me personally, it's uh, finding a good mixture of uh, not taking things too seriously, where it's like we don't have deadlines, we try to work on things that are uh, like challenging or interesting and trying to combine that with actually fixing the stuff that needs to be fixed, which is the kind of the hard part. Um, uh, I think if you have people who are passionate about what you're doing, uh, you get more interesting games as a result of it. And also you have more fun in the office. It's, it's just so hard to force creativity. You know, you, you, it, to put a deadline on that or, or to put demands on, on creativity, it, it, it rarely works. I've never actually seen it work. So, uh, so you, you gotta let people be free in, in, the, in, in what they do. Well, part of that is, you know, a lot of people here have seen pictures of the office, right? The brand new office. It went from a tiny cramped, well, it wasn't tiny and cramped when you moved in. <laughs> when you moved out, it was completely, every nook and cranny was filled. Like to an office which has a lot of open space. Like Carl, I know you were heavily involved in a lot of the decisions of making that happen. All of you were. Like, tell me about why is it that you walk into the office and for floor space alone, it's about a third working space and about two thirds entertainment space, I'd call it? Uh, first of all, I, I think when we decided on the theme for the office, um, there were 14 votes f for this theme and one vote against it and, and that was my vote. Uh, <laughs> I asked uh, the wrong person then. So, um, <laughs> but, but I'm extremely happy with how it looks like. Um, and, and I think that's part of the philosophy with Mojang, that we, we want to have fun and we want to have... I, actually, I think we said that when we formed the company, that we want to create the, one of the most... Um, the best workplaces in the world. Um, and I, I think we're getting pretty close to that. Um, and it also has to do with us being in, independent. We don't have any investors, we don't have anyone to tell us what to do, so we, we're allowed to have fun. So can you guys talk to me about like kind of a lot of companies, you see people have their Twitter accounts. 
the individual employees have their Twitter accounts. And on there, they actually have to write, like, yes, I work for such and such, but these thoughts are my own. But no Mojang employees have that. And I don't see a lot of self-censorship even on Mojang tweets, right? We're all allowed to say whatever we want to say. Like, how does that tie in to the overall, like, community communication that goes out. You know, people say things and we're not controlling anything they're saying. Like, what is the point behind that? Versus letting people just kind of, you know, in a lot of companies, they want to control a message so that maybe it doesn't embarrass, it doesn't go against maybe some personal views that the founders may have or anything like that. But here there's no oversight. Like, how does that even work? Well, I think that the, the employees of Mojang are kind of what, what is Mojang. And of course, we have the board kind of trying to figure out some kind of path nonsense. Uh, but the, the actual individuals working there are the ones who set the tone. And if we hire people because they fit, we think they fit, fit the kind of overall th tone, we don't want to then censor them. Uh, so uh, and to me, being able to be non not censored is very important. So I would never like run a company that censors its employees. So we don't really have secrets either. We have some things to say we would prefer it if you didn't tweet this, kind of. But, or if, if there is like an external partner that has some secret, then we might say don't tweet this. But other than that, it's do whatever you want. So Jacob, you're the lead on Scrolls. You run that team. We have multiple teams, right? Even Minecraft itself is segmented into you know, Pocket Edition. You've got all the Xbox and all of that. So how? Do you run one company and have all these teams and still actually make anything happen? Because there's still, it is a small company. There's only so many resources to go around. But still, we're able to produce, put out updates, make new games. Like, what is, I, I'd like to hear from you first. Like, how do you do this? Well, I think we want people to, to be able to move between projects as well. Uh, first of all, I, I think you've you got to stay. Uh, um, interested in your projects. So every now and then you may need a break from, from the project you normally are in and you want to help out on another, some other stuff. And uh, we've had Jens doing some, some of the codes for Scrolls just because he wanted to sometimes. We have uh, Aaron uh, working on Pocket Edition as well as Scrolls and uh, Daniel Frisk working on Scrolls in the beginning, now moving over to, to doing some Minecraft stuff. So um, I, it's not that hard, really. I think the, the, the big reason for that, what makes it work so well, is all the, all the people we have at Mojang are really dedicated to the company and the games that we're making. So we don't need really a, a project leader to separate things and have like, okay, you have to do this now, because people work, you know? It's, it's basically, it's, it's, it's freedom and responsibility for everyone. And so far, it's, it's been working really well, and, and I think that ties into us not being a big company, so we don't have to have all these levels of, um, hierarchy basically um, so it, it's, a, it's a very relaxed tone and you're allowed to shift project assuming it you know it works out which it, most of the time it does um, and it, it, it's been working really well everyone's too so dedicated so it's not a problem well I know a lot of people well we all know this would love to work at Mojang how many people here wish they could work at Mojang oh I see one guy doesn't so I, I'd like to hear from all three of you. Like, what is it that you do look for? And I'm not saying that we're taking applications right now. But what I mean is, some people aren't even old enough to work here, but as they're developing themselves, like, what should they focus on so that in the future they are able to go and join a company that they think is, is the place that they want to work? Let's just go down the line, Carl. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I think what we look at is what's the person actually has, has done. Uh, so if they have any projects that they published or um, have um, open source, pro if it's a developer that is uh, open source projects that we can look at, um, that's important that so you actually have produced something. It's, it's also a lot to do with the personality that it fits in with our team. Um, um, and you know, just getting things done is, I think it's important. Yeah, I think... Uh it kind of varies of what the team we currently have is, because sometimes we feel like, okay, we might need someone slightly more structure. We might need someone who's more of a go-getter. Um, but to me, uh, like being genuine and being curious and being able to actually produce something, uh, having showed that you have a history of that, is the probably most important. 
Yeah, I, I think they said it very well, both of them. Um, but but since we since we don't want this big hierarchy, company with a big hierarchy, I think it's important that you you can, as I mentioned previously, you know, being able to to actually uh, be responsible for what you do. You know, that, that you can you can you can take a ball and run with it. Um, and that, then as for for what type of work they, I mean that that's different. Sometimes we we need a, a super hardcore programmer, sometimes a graphic artist or, or whatever. But um, feeling that you really want to contribute and that you, you're, you're excited for what we're doing is such, it plays such a big role. So let's hear from each of you, but in no particular order, so you're not put on the spot. Like, give one tip on what someone should do to really prepare themselves for a job, because it's very different from enjoying coding, you know, doing those kinds of things, being part of the gaming environment. It's a total different thing, and we've seen lots of people apply who have passion and many things, but maybe don't fit in various ways. Like, what is one thing that each of you thinks is important for people to do in order to be able to join this workforce, you know, not Mojang instead, but I mean, just to be able to go from being an enthusiast to an actual professional game developer or graphic artist or what have you. I, I think it comes back to what I said. It's, you know, if you want to get something done, you have to learn how to do that. So, it being that being part of you know being structured and actually uh, putting something out there needs courage. It needs, uh, uh, you know, some sort of uh, knowledge to actually distribute something that is people want. So I think that's it. You guys have anything? <laughs> no, I think it's. Uh, I mean, the things you brought up, like being curious and being passionate, and those are probably the most important factors. And then it's just having been that for a long enough time where you can kind of show that you have, uh, that you actually have those qualities, because it's hard to tell without like the history of it. Uh, unless it's like someone, you know someone who's been working at Mojang and you know them personally and they can vouch for you. It's very difficult to kind of be able to figure out what people are like without experience. So I think experience is kind of important. Yeah, I'll go with curiosity as well, like Marco said. That's a, that's a great thing to have. Um, and then, you know, as with everything, you, you put enough time into it and, you know, dedication. You're, you're going you're gonna to learn it and you're going to improve and you're going to become better. So. Uh, Work hard and you know stay positive towards what you're doing and try to finish projects, which is really hard. So I mean, basically, like curiosity. Is, you guys really like the curiosity thing, and also a dedication to actually be able to complete things that you can show to a potential employer or partner if you want to start your own firm, like that you've actually completed work and you can show that. And Carl, I know most of the applications go to you first. So what, what is it in the initial, you see this application that will kind of turn you on or off about it right away? Because immediately you will have a sense of a person. Like, I, I want to help people because I see some of these things and I think the same thing. Like, what do you think is important in that initial communication to, to be able to convey that, hey, you know, I'm special in some way? Well, you can, yeah, I think you can sense the personality from an email as well. You know, if, if the person is too pushy, that's probably, probably not a good idea. Um, but if it's, the person is honest and you know, telling us that it's a dream to work for Mojang and, and uh, they show projects that they've done, I usually forward that to the team and see what they think. And um, you know, that's pr pretty much it. So let's talk a little bit about where things are headed. I mean, right now, there are many projects. There have been panels for the past two days about all the different projects that Mojang has going on, in, including with partners and developing all these different things, and including the charity work that we're doing with Block by Block. Like, where do you guys see Mojang going in the next year and then after that? Like, what is kind of some of the goals that you can share with people about what some of our priorities are, what some of our focus is going to be, and where you want to see the company go? This is also for all three of you. Um, yeah, we had a board meeting a while ago where we decided that we would stick to just producing mostly our own games. So we're going to keep focusing on the scrolls and Minecraft. And for Minecraft, I think uh, uh, helping the community more, like actually making the mod API at some point would be really good. Uh, and then I'm personally working on a new, new game, which is a space game. So I'm hoping in a year it might be 
someone might be playing it at least. Uh, so that's it for me personally. Yeah, I think it, you know, the, the discussion that we had is, you know, what, what, what kind of company do we want to have? What, what, what do we want to do? And it's, you know, most of the companies is great at making games, and that's what we want to do. And I, I think if we stick to stuff that we are good at, um, that makes us a better company. I, I think um, we've been pretty good at that so far. We're, you know, only 25 people, and, and we've accomplished quite a lot. Um, and that's, you know, thanks to the that we have great partners and um, and that the community is helping us with everything we're doing, basically, both on you know business side and and also on on product side. So uh, we that helps us also to, to choose projects. Um, we uh, pick projects that we can handle with small teams and uh, with the help from the community. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, it, it's it's. Things have been moving so fast these last two years. It's so much has happened that it's, it's really easy to... Uh, you, you get a proposition by a lot of different stuff, and, and it's very uh, flattering. Um, but we need to stay focused on what we really want to do and just look to, to, to that. And, and that is games at the end of the day. Um, so so I, I think that's the direction we're heading, just keep making games and, and not try to put like a, a bunch of restrictions on ourselves within that spectra. I think uh, we want to... Like we said, we're curious. I'm, I'm sure we're going to want to try some, some new, funny, different stuff as we go, but uh, it's going to be within the game development uh, since, I mean, that's our passion and that's what we really want to do. Well, Marcus, one of the things you just talked about was, uh, you know, a focus on kind of working with the community and kind of, you know, yesterday when we were talking, I think it was when we were up here, but uh, you had mentioned, like, part of what you could see in the future. Oh, it was an audience question. Part of what you see in the future is potentially where the community is kind of taking over some of, not necessarily development, but where it goes. And, and Mojang not necessarily developing new features, but actually just supporting the community and doing through mods and other things, like taking the games to the next level. Like, so how do you see us actually fostering that community? And what, what would you like to see from the community that will help us help them type of things? Uh, I think it can... Uh... That was more of a could I see that happen kind of scenario. I think uh, like the, the Minecraft team now has a lot of things they want to add still. So I think there's still lots of content coming up. But I definitely think once we have the mod API in the future, the role might shift from us actually, instead of us like expanding the game, it might shift into like maintaining the game and trying to maintain the community, kind of have a central hub for the community to kind of gather around. Um, I think the community is already doing an amazing job, so I don't think they need to do anything more. The reason we have Minecon at all is because the community is just amazing. Uh, so we can, uh, I think we'll keep doing Minecon, we'll keep uh, supporting the game, we'll keep trying to make sure it doesn't crash. <laughs> that's, that's a, those are good goals. I like those goals. That's the constitution. No, that's not. Um, but yeah, I, w when I mentioned the mod thing, I, I meant that as one part of like the, the whole possibility. But like, what do you see as the future of how we interact? I mean, it's getting to the point where the community has grown to such a size, it's actually sometimes difficult to be able to hear the way you used to feedback because it's, it's massive. The, the bandwidth doesn't exist to hear it all. So how do you want to be able to communicate and continue that relationship that has existed and still exists, obviously, here? Like, w what do you see as the future of that relationship with the community? I, I think it depends on what kind of community you have. If you have, for other game developers, I think you could set up this kind of community ambassador program or something, with the community uh, points a few ambassadors or something. But I think for Minecraft, we don't really need that, because a lot of people put out so much content, and the content that people like gets kind of upvoted through social media, like on Reddit or on uh, uh, YouTube or Twitch or whatever. Uh, so kind of the things that are popular kind of rise to the top, and if those people talk about things they would like to see, then we kind of see that automatically. Uh, and then, of course, I get fans calling me. Thank you for calling me. It's not annoying. It's a little bit annoying. Uh, at, on your on yourself, yeah, on my private cell phone number. I don't know how I got out there, uh, but it's uh, like with suggestions and stuff, and uh, so it's they are vocal enough, I think. 
Awesome. Well, what I'd like to do, because I know that the line will be nice and long, is go ahead and take questions from the audience. Um, we have a microphone set up right over here, and we can go ahead and take questions if anyone has questions for any of our founders. These are not Minecraft game questions, but any questions you actually have about Mojang, about the future, the past, or anything like that. Don't all run up at once. <laughs> Where did the name Mojang come from? Uh, that was actually uh, many, many years ago in the beginning of time. I made a game called Verm Online with a friend, Rolf Jansson. And uh, we had the na game, na the company named Mojang for that company. And the name actually came from, we were playing EVE Online. And we needed a name for our corporation in the game. So we just made up Mojang specifications or something. Right. And Mojang is a Swedish word, Mojang, without the dots over the A, which means gadget. Thank you. Who originally proposed the idea, uh, Notch, of Jeb starting the development for Minecraft, and how did you feel about it? I think Jeb was originally hired to be a back-end developer, but he kind of just started working on Minecraft and came up with so many good ideas. Uh, I think it's an amazing coincidence that he like had 99.5% exactly the same vision as me for the game. So I was super comfortable with him. We worked together for a year, and then after that year, I kind of asked him, do you want to take over? He said yes. Will you ever uh, make more weapons in Minecraft? And also, uh, who came up with the idea of the creeper? You'll have to ask Jens if you're going to add more weapons. And uh, uh, the creeper was a lucky coincidence. I was trying to make a pig and failed. OK, thank you. Hi, I've been uh, a player and a community member since the very start of Minecraft in uh, May 2009. And I've seen the community grow and change a lot. And the interaction uh, between you and the community has changed a lot as well. You used to be a lot of personal interaction to Twitter and your blog and IRC. And now it's a bit more distant and, uh, yeah, a bit more passive. So what do you prefer for getting feedback? Uh, I think... Uh, for the feedback for Minecraft, I think you should send it to Jens anyway. Uh, these days, I'm kind of it, it got really difficult to keep up with like IRC because I got swamped as soon as I logged in. Uh, Twitter, I tried doing as long as I could, but now my Twitter feed is just it's like just refreshing. There's like five new. Um, I, I've been meaning to get back to Twitter because I really miss just replying on Twitter for like an hour a day. Um, so I'm doing that a lot more for 10 to the Sea. Uh, I'm uh, fairly active in like the, the subreddit for it. And, uh, so, and I think uh, the best way uh, early on in a game is just like uh, tell me on Twitter. That's probably the best way. Or email me. I usually I read way more emails than I reply to. OK, thank you. Yeah. You're uh, often considered as a god in Minecraft. So. Um, does that make Jens Jesus? <laughs> I think it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> OK. My question is, was uh, Minecraft always meant to be programmed in Java? Uh, yes, it was the language I was the most comfortable with. Uh, the only really huge downside was that it was a huge mess to port it to the Xbox. So that was a big downside. Thank you. I'm Steampunk with a C at the end, and I was wondering, do you ever feel like you've overdeveloped a game? Mm, yes. I think uh, that's kind of inevitable the longer you keep working on a game. I see this with other games, and it's probably happened in some areas in Minecraft as well. Uh, early on in a the game, there's some kind of uh, charming, uh, um, almost like uh, potential of of imagination of things to come. You can imagine what the game could become. And once it's in there, part of that imagination goes away, I think. So the games change as they mature, and they're not really as like fantasy enticing. Uh, do you intend on uh, making
making Minecraft less um, stressful on computers, so not as laggy? No. Also, will you sign my sword? No, I will oh. stage right now. <laughs> if you catch me afterwards and there's not a huge queue, then yes. Okay, throw it up here. <laughs> Give me the sword. Give me the sword. Give me the sword. Give him your sword. Give me the sword. <laughs> Does anyone have a pen? Okay. And please don't everyone do this now. Here. No one else gets to ask the same question, though. No. Every question has to be unique. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's the story up behind the name Notch? Uh, well, I used to have another nickname and I changed it to Notch, and I won't tell you what the other one was, because it's embarrassing. There probably are a few people here who know it, but it's kind of like a secret. Thank you. So your kind of open culture is quite unique among games companies. And um, the only other company that really stands out with that sort of culture is Valve. And they've made a lot of comments about how hard it is to maintain that culture. Uh, do you have sort of like plans on how to stop sort of like corporate creep getting into Mojang? We, we, we don't have a formal plan for it, but uh, I, I think it's part of you know, the people that we hire, that we, uh, we try to um, hire people that are like us at Mojang and, and they communicate like we do. Um, so hopefully we can keep that kind of transparency. Um, do you have any plans for a Mojang stock? Like so to, sell. to sell stock? Uh, no, we want to stay fully self-owned. So we don't want any external pressure, including external shareholders. Who designed Mojang's logo? That was me. It's, it's a nice logo. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, how has the success of Minecraft changed your life? Are you now driving with your Ferrari to work, or? I, I don't have a driver's license, <laughs> but I do. I do go on uh, like fancier trips, and I've I've been in private jets. Uh, but like what I do with my like normal life is basically stay at home and play Team Fortress 2. So no, it hasn't changed much like everyday life. Thank you. Could you please sign my pickaxe? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say sword. Okay then, come up here. Okay, new rule. You can't ask me to sign anything. Thank you. That was brave. <laughs> anyway, uh, what do three of you see as the best tips for young entrepreneurs in the field of social media, online video, and game development? Wow, that's a broad question. Uh, I think if you're if you dare to be yourself and to be honest, even like with things that you know might get some backlash, uh, you might uh, uh, appear more genuine, or then you will be more genuine, I guess, as a definition. And that might give you more like long-term fans, which is probably a good idea. Um, and I think if you're only interested in, in like making a quick buck, then selling out is a great idea. But okay, so, so mainly genuine, being genuine and well, not doing it for the money. Yeah, if you do that, it depends on what your goals are. If your goals are to get rich quick, Sounds then it's good. probably not going to work. But okay, can I get an answer from, from your two neighbors as well? <laughs> um, They're shy. It, it's, it's really hard. I didn't hear what Marcus was saying because we can't hear each other up here <laughs> from the echo. Um, I think you should try to, yes, try to get a good mixture of, first of all, what are people interested in actually hearing? Like, what, what are you going to talk about? Um, and maybe not try to be super serious all the time, because that will basically kill any conversation you have with anyone. So, you know, try to try to you try to mix it up and have a mixed mixed content, and then put in some laughs in there, and try to put things that are interested. Um, but I mean, basically, that's the only tip I have. It's okay. 
So have fun with it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and business-wise? I think uh, being open with everything uh, you do, um, not only the post, like only posting the positive stuff. You know, if you only post about milestones and um, the accomplishment, I think if you post about you know the the business struggles that you have, you get help, and that way you can involve people um, helping you out, and, and people feel like, like they're, they're contributing. Okay, so not only take your highs, but also share your lows. Okay, exactly. Thanks, guys. Okay, so what has been your favorite addition to Minecraft uh, till now? For me, it's the Infinite Worlds. They changed the game in a fundamental way. All right, and the other guys? The adventure update was, was really cool for me. All right. Uh, difficult question? It, it is a difficult question. There's been so many, so many add-ons. Um, I, I'm actually gonna say the Infinite Worlds as well because I think that's just a, that's just a super cool idea. That was mine. It, it was yours, but I can take it as well. It's, it's mine now. Uh, it, it, because it's it's slightly mind blowing to actually. You, you, you very rarely do you actually use all that space. I come to find out, but it's a it's a, it's a very nice feature in the game. All right. Do you even lift, bra? No, YOLO. All right, thank you. I know memes. How old were you when you started coding? Uh, I was eight years old. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Stefan, and I come from the UK. Uh, the trip, the tickets, the merchandising, the food for a couple of days cost about almost 2,000 pounds. Um, I work for a cause in Tibet for the children of the Himalayas. And with that amount of money, we can actually feed 200 orphans for six months. So I was wondering, because I heard the word charity, if you are already involved in the charity, and if you are not, what are you willing to give back to the kids? Because my son spent 99 euros to play games, and with that same amount, I can feed kids for about three weeks, a couple of bowl of rice. And would you take my car to see what I do for 99 euros? Sure, we can do that. Um, I don't know if you heard about Thank you. the uh, Block by Block project that we're doing. Excuse me? Uh, did you hear about our Block by Block project that we're doing? No, I did not. I'm sorry. It's a collaboration with the UN, um, and we are um, helping making um, 300 public spaces across the world until 2016. That's great, thank so, you. So that's the cost that we're focusing on right now. Okay. Um, and we're doing several different kind of uh, fundraising for that project. And then okay. hopefully, you know, that will contribute to uh, better uh, uh, areas. Uh, I was just trying to put things in perspective because of the difference. People say sometimes, you know, they're far away, those kids, but they're only a few hours away uh, by plane. and and some of them are in desperate situations and there's such a contrast you know when i go to india every year yes. I'm very, i want to congratulate you for helping uh, people who, who are uh, desperate in desperation of uh, food and stuff Thanks thank you that, that's a great point uh hi um i was just wondering where you uh, think uh, your new game uh, zero times 10 to the sea is gonna end up and where minecraft said it, uh, minecraft said it. I think the Minecraft bit is kind of uh, easier because that's kind of self-sustaining. That's going to keep going for as long as the community keeps it going. Uh, the space game, Tent to the Sea, uh, I don't know. Right now, it's not even a game. You can kind of you can run around in a space and shoot each other with pew pew lasers. Uh, so I'm hoping to get to the point where we can actually start adding gameplay and try to see if it's fun. And hopefully it is fun, and then we can kind of let the community take part in that as well. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm a bit nervous about it. It's going to be fun. OK, thanks. Hello, I was wondering um, how and when you got into coding, and if you've got any tips for coding. For, for coding? Uh, well, yeah, practice. Practice a lot and read like blogs about it. and. Stuff. Even if you don't agree with what people think about coding, uh, you can at least know why you disagree. 
So, and try a bunch of different programming languages. You might start with learning one, but then try to look into others, because then you know the strengths of the language you're using. Okay, thank you. How famous did you think Minecraft was going to be when you started making it? Not this famous at all. Uh, I was thinking it was uh, going to be a, a decent, uh, like, uh, choppy, pokey, stabby type of game with monsters in caves. Uh, and I had no idea how popular it was going to be. I was hoping like, it might appear on like, PC Gamer. or uh, Hopefully, the, like, the grand idea was to have like, a couple of thousand people actually buy the game so I could afford making another one. When Minecraft was in development, did you ever think it would turn out to be an RPG-style game? I don't remember exactly when I kind of started shifting over to that, but originally it was more arcadey. Um, and more about uh, actually gamifying the building element of like blocks. Uh, but I did want to, part of that RPG shift was because I don't play in creative mode, I wanted to slow down the construction to make it feel more valuable. And that kind of opened the doors to, to some interesting RPG stuff. If you meant the fantasy angle, that was the start, plan from the start, to have like fantasy monsters and stuff. Um, I have three questions. Um, the first one is, you, Notch, promised um, a red dragon and a fish in Minecraft. Are those ever going to be added? My second question is, are you ever going to make a Minecraft 2? And my third question is, what's up with your Orion? Uh, if I talk about the feature, it's not necessarily a promise. I can change my mind. So uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to be added. You have to add, ask uh, Jens. What was the second question? Um, Minecraft are you ever going to make a hero, um, Minecraft 2? I don't know. We'll see. I don't think, seriously see the point in doing a Minecraft 2. Uh, if we did it, it would have to be something that is completely different. We can't just make the same game again. It's not that type of kind of game. Uh, that works for like Call of Duty and stuff, but it doesn't work for this kind of game. It would have to be something different. And the hero brand is not real. Hi, I have a question about the old Minecraft Dolja. When the source code will be released, do you think uh, the old Minecraft Dolja will be released too? So the, uh, the player can play the old Minecraft version and uh, make a, a renew of the, the game? Oh, well, that's an interesting question. Uh, I guess what we could do, because we don't really have good brand uh, or good labels in the, the, the source, uh, source repository. Uh, I have like the source code of the really old versions at home, like zipped up in files because I didn't use any code repositories back then. But if we do release the source code, which is kind of also up to these two guys in the future, but that's after the game has died, uh, then we could just release the entire like Git uh, stuff so you could actually go back in the Git history, I guess if people want that. We'd have to look carefully for passwords in it. <laughs> OK, thank you. That might not actually happen because of, I just realized there might be some secrets in the old versions of the code. That yeah, we'll see. How does it feel that Minecraft has become so popular? Uh, it feels overwhelming, especially when you point it out. Uh, and then. Uh, it feels pretty amazing. I think just the fact that there is such a strong community around it is very cool to be part of. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, when Mojang came up, um, did you only start working at Minecraft or did you work at uh, other programs or games too? Uh, I mostly just worked on Minecraft. I sometimes do like these tiny games on the side, usually for competitions or to like, test out a stupid idea I might have. Uh, most of them never get anywhere. So it was like 98% of least Minecraft in the beginning. OK, thank you. I'm happy to hear that you're recognizing that games and companies have a life cycle. I'm curious as to whether or not the company 
profit shares with employees and if you're establishing uh, cash reserves against the day when your revenues may slow so that you can maintain development on the other products. Um, well, last year, Marcus here gave away his total dividend from the company uh, to the employees. Um, and um, this year we haven't announced the bonus yet, but I kind of just said that there is a bonus coming. Um, and um, Spoiled it? I spoiled it. <laughs> um, it and uh, what was the second question? If the company is establishing financial reserves to sustain Mojang through development times when revenues yeah, may slow. Yeah, yes, we are. Why did you call the nether the nether? Because I live in the Netherlands and that's no hell. <laughs> I've been to... No, just kidding. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, because uh, it's the direction down, it's like nether. And that's also where the name nether comes from in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, it's just a coincidence that it shares a, a name with the Netherlands. Okay, thank you. Did Mojang ever make a game before Minecraft? Uh, no, not this form. There was another company called Mojang Specifications where I made uh, Verm Online with Rolf, Rolf Johnson. Thank you. Who came up with Minecon and why did you create Minecon? Who came up with Minecon? I think it was you. Was it me? Yeah. It was uh, it, it's yeah. usually how it works. Marcus says something that sounds very far-fetched, and then that's sort of, oh, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and uh, I think the first Minecon, you said something in, in the summer, last summer. So yeah. we, had, we had basically four months to put together a huge conference in Vegas. Um, we pulled it off. Thank you, Notch. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you, Notch, for making an awesome game. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ask Jens. Pardon? You have to ask Jens. Oh, right, okay. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, I got two questions. Um, you have um, added the nether in the game, but can you add um, heaven too in the game? You'll have to ask Jens. He's the okay. lead developer now. I try not to get involved. Okay. And I, uh, the other question is if I can get an autograph. <laughs> You'll have to catch me after this thing. Will Herobite never be added to the game? You'll have to ask Jens. Hi, um, I, you touched a little bit on your foundation block by block. Where might I be able to get more information on that? As well as, it's, is it something that I or we could get involved with in the future? Or? Yes, we, we're actually building a, a website for it now. Uh, okay. It should probably be launched within one or two weeks. Okay. Um, and there we'll have all the information about the project and, and also the different sub-projects, the, the 300 sites that we're building, um, and ways to contribute. So, so look out for uh, uh, an announcement on the Mojang blog. All right, great. Thank you. And thanks for creating a marvelous game for kids and, and grown-ups. Thank you. <laughs> In my survival world, I have permanent world holes. Do you know what it is and how to solve it? You have per permanent what? World? Permanent world holes, chunk errors. Oh, I don't know how to solve that. I think it's, uh, there are so many reasons behind why they can happen. Usually it's uh, when it saves and it gets corrupted somehow because either the game crashes or like a computer reboots or something that can happen. So it's probably been saved permanently as an empty chunk now. So the data is probably there, but it's been saved as empty somehow. And I think you basically just have to fill it in. Sorry. Okay. Hello. What is your idea to create, uh, to set a block of grass to the logo of Minecraft? I think it was the most iconic block I had back when I had to choose an icon. I think that's just why. 
Thank you. We'll be my con in Russia. We, we don't have any plans for it, but you never know. Uh, Notch, I've always wondered, where do you buy your hats? Uh, I actually got this one at GDC last year, I think. All right. So this one is from, uh, is it Seattle, San Francisco? I forget all the time. One of the West Coast USA Seattle. cities. And thanks for making Minecraft. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks again. for paying. Could I, just, could I just say a really big thank you to you because my brothers are your biggest fans and you're the one who made it. To, to help me make my brother's game. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you everyone for coming. This is, uh, you know, the day is winding down now. We have a few more sessions. Um, it, you know, we can't take everyone's questions at all times, and unfortunately we can't, you know, always stop, but Okay, so stick around and maybe if Marcus has time, he may be able to spend a small amount of time with you. But let's thank our entire Mojang Board of Directors team for speaking with us today. And thank you.